Ashley Walsh is the director of Maudie, which is released in cinemas this Friday. Ashley, congratulations on the film. Um, it's a really touching biopic, and one that introduces us to an artist that I suspect an awful lot of people haven't heard of before, and that, of course, is Maud Lewis. How did you come across her story? I was sent the script. I remember reading it in a hotel in Cardiff in Wales uh, one evening. Um, I was there on on a recce, actually, for another film. And, uh, you know, you have the... It's amazing where you end up reading things as as, as a director. The internet wasn't working that night and my phone needed to be charged. And anyway, I thought, you know what, I'll sit and I'll read this script. And I got to the last page and I thought, wow, this is the most amazing story. And I wrote to my agent, I found the email actually the other week and I I, I said something like, um, this is an incredible script and I think, you know, if I had a couple of good people with me, maybe I could do something rather nice. (laughs) What do I have to do to meet these people? And I spoke to one of the producers two days later and then, you know, had a bigger call towards the end of that week and uh, that's where I first came across. But I Googled Maud that night, obviously. And I was going to say, had you, had you come pictures across of her before and at saw all? pictures of her paintings? No, I haven't. So she was completely yeah. new to you, so yeah. the whole thing was, yeah. was a learning process yeah. for you. But what I did have was a huge desire for quite a few years to make a a film about a painter I'd actually found a story that I wanted to do I was trained as a painter myself so I you know there's a lot of it I kind of probably got and I I just thought gosh this is the most incredible story and I did come across folk art in Canada over you know I visited Canada over a period of kind of 10 or 12 years a very good friend who lived there and I you know discovered folk art on those visits and and you know and the same with american folk art it's so little respected in many ways so it was a natural progression yeah. for you to yeah, yeah. to make this film yeah so it's filmed in nova scotia isn't yeah. it no it's filmed in newfoundland it's filmed in for newfoundland. nova scotia for nova scotia yes. so you weren't you weren't exactly on on location then no, I mean, we recreated her house yes. and built it at the side of the road. Yes. Is a, it, the, ori- the original house is in a gallery yes, in Nova it is. Scotia, isn't it's it? It's a permanent exhibit in the art gallery of Nova Scotia in Halifax. So in how, how did you go about recreating So, I, you know, house? one of the first things I, I said to the producers was, you know, I wanted to go and see the house. Uh, there's also an, an amount of her artwork in, in the museum as well. And I went and visited that. And I wanted to go on my own because I wanted that kind of experience, whatever sort of spoke to me. And um, I visited the house one evening. I got off a flight from London and it was pouring rain and I, I, I couldn't wait. I put my coat, got, you know, a coat out of my case in the hotel and wandered down. I went back the next day then to meet the curator there. And, and, and you know, we did a really good chat about, you know, how the house progressed and... A lot about her, you know, about her paintings. There are probably eight or ninety pieces of her work there, um, and and then I went out to flew out onto Newfoundland, and just started to kind of find a way with it. But we, I knew we had to replicate that. However, we did it. You know, the, we talked about would we have it in a studio, build it in the studio, and then build it outside. That was because of the weather, and then when my designer started and we started to kind of look around I thought you know why don't we just build it at the side of the road and, and experience that weather whatever it throws at us um, so was it a, a complete house or yes no no complete house so you actually filmed this as a complete house you didn't take out no 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 no, to, no, no, to no, no, no and then we progressed the house on over the years so there were four houses really um, and so when it needed to be changed from you know, the ni- late 1930s to the 50s, we'd go away, film something else, come back the next day, and they were all prepared in a, in a gymnasium and a school in St John's. Because the house does change quite a lot in yes, terms it does. of the paintings yes, that it does. she adds yes. to the walls and, and the, the windows and so forth. Yes, it does. And then, of course, there's a changing of the seasons as well that yes. goes with it. yeah. So, so that, that that's achieved over 28 days. You know, some days you get sunshine, and, and we got that lovely, just that turn into from late summer into autumn, you know, we got that. 
we knew we weren't going to get snow and so we took two days off the schedule and, and, and parked it and I, I went back out in the middle of January we went back out for two days with a much smaller crew but with Ethan and Sally and you know the and house and, le- and left the snow yeah <laughs> it looked incredibly cold yes. actually you mentioned Sally Hawkins who of mm-hmm. course plays um, Maudie wonderful performance a very physical performance yes. as well because obviously Maud suffered very badly from arthritis how did she go about recreating that for a lot of a lot of really hard work. You know, one of the reasons um, I wanted Sally, when I read the script that night in Cardiff, I wrote down one name and it was Sally's. And we'd worked together before and I just knew she'd find that. She'd be able to... You see pictures of Maud. She is very crippled as an older lady with uh, arthritis, which she had from the time she was a child. We started at the beginning, you know, everybody, you know, we knew the end because I also, some months later, found three minutes of this documentary, which is a half-hour documentary that that CBC made about her, which was really the thing that that made her famous in Canada. And that's actually in the film. And that's at the end of the film. So that helped a little bit. You thought, well, that's actually where we're going to, you know. Um, and then we had to work our way back and imagine what she was like as a you know late twenties, early thirty year old woman. There's a photograph of her as a child. There's another photograph of her as a young woman, probably maybe eighteen or nineteen. And we just worked our way back and 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 you know spoke to people, um, met people, and then just worked our way through it. You know, and uh, I got her costume shoes quite early on. You know, because I thought that was helpful. That's why she always loves shoes in the film because there's something wrong with her feet. But and maybe you know if she was a little more nervous with people, she limped a bit more. Her, her she was trying to cover her hand, which was always quite a little bit crippled, even as a young woman. So she would try and pull her sleeve down, you know. And then we just worked our way through it, you know. And I mean, weeks of work, months of work. Then I found an artist in London who, because Sally and myself live in London, so. It made sense that painted the nearest style that I could find to Maud. Uh, there's a naive group of artists and I found a lovely lady painter and Sally and herself used to meet once a week in a church hall in Soho and paint. So Sally had to learn to paint yeah, as well in that style. In that style and because I wanted her to be able to you know, it's said in various scenes in the script of course she painted, but I thought, no, you know, it might be she might want to paint you know, at least she does this, she'd be able to paint whatever scene she wants. She could paint the window, she could paint, you know. Uh, so that took, you know, that months of, of, of that. So it's all consuming. But that's what Sally does, you know. She um, buys into that. I suppose that's what I do as a director too, you know. You kind of just submerge yourself in this uh, world for a while. And the film actually, I suppose, is very close to being a two-hander with yes. with Sally and also Ethan Hawke. Mm. His role is a really hard one because it's actually difficult to make him sympathetic. Yes. How did he and Sally manage to achieve their wonderful on-screen chemistry? Well, I think, first of all, I think they both um, they work in a similar way. But, you know, I think uh, part of the reason whole part of the reason Ethan wanted to do this film was to get the opportunity to work with Sally also that role was a real challenge for an actor like that you know it's not often you're you come in and you're playing this very silent difficult man who finds it uh, extremely difficult actually to communicate with people very inarticulate illiterate all of those things I think Ethan found attractive, you know, because it's not, it, it, a lot of it played in silence. And, and when his frustration or anger or, you know, whatever breaks out, then it's in a rather physical way sometimes. Yeah. Um, I remember one moment in yeah. the film when he does that particularly, yeah. you could have heard a pin yes, drop. always. It was such a shock. Yeah, and that's the moment that he starts to change in the film, which is why it's important to have it there. And I don't think you think at the beginning of the film I'm going to fall in love with this man at the end of it but you do you go on that journey you know you come to understand and you come him. to understand him and 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 that's the real challenge that's the real achievement 
of Ethan's performance in this film. That's what's so special about it. He manages to do that. And you've said that you've trained in art yourself. Is there a particular painting of Maud's that you're fond of? Yeah, I, I love her winter paintings. Why is that? Uh, probably because I am probably because I'm not a huge lover of the sun and 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 uh, and and those sort of warmer ones. I just there's something rather silent about the, the, her winter paintings. I kind of imagine her sitting looking out at the snow and and um, they're cooler as well. I probably attracted to kind of cooler colours. They're also slightly bleaker in a way, but. Her my favorite painting of hers. She holds it up in the film when the journalists come to interview her, and she's standing at the door holding a painting, and there's a photograph of Maud holding that very painting from a photo uh, shoot that was done at the same time as the documentary, and that's my favorite painting of hers. It's a it's a pony and trap moving away from the viewer. Um, towards a bridge with a little dog running behind it and you know snow and mountains and in, in, in what's in special there. about that one it's just you can almost hear you know that, that those you can hear the you know the horse and the and you know sense the snow and i think that's why I, it reminded me also the first time that i went to newfoundland um i flew in and it was march and uh, the Atlantic was frozen a mile out that year. It was one of the toughest winters they ever had, and there was snow everywhere. And, and, and you know, probably because of that. But the cooler colours and the uh, there's just something rather lovely about those two people sitting in that little um, pony and trap, as I call it, a horse and carriage. That's yeah. That's I prefer her winter paintings. Okay. Ashley, thank you very okay. much indeed. You're very Thank welcome. you. Thank you.